Welcome back to Winners and Losers, everybody. The show that looks at the highs and the lows from around world football this weekend. As you can tell, I'm joined by Patrick Van Straten and apparently a drill. There's a drill in the background, so if you hear that occasionally, our apologies, but we're going to try and do our best to get through it. Pato, nevertheless, who are we starting with? Well, we have to start with Chelsea. They got a 3-0 win over Leicester, and Joe's going to tell us a bit about the game. Yeah, well, 3-0 actually flatters Leicester in this game. This could easily have been 5 or 6-0. This was a battering at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea had 16 shots on the day. Leicester didn't even amass a shot on target. I mean, Chelsea were so comfortable, they were, they were able to bring three academy graduates off their bench. That's the first time in the club's history that's ever happened in Ola Aina, Ruben Loftus-Cheek and Nathaniel Chalaba. Chalaba actually got an assist for the final goal. There's one man I want to talk about, N'Golo Kante, obviously playing against his old side. He got booed by the Foxes fans, picked up a man of the match award nevertheless, and the system that Conte is operating in really suits him, doesn't it, Pato? Yeah, he's switched to a 3-4-3 now, which we've known that he's wanted to do for a while. Marcus Alonso slots in really well there. Because he's a wing-back, he was bought to play that position, but... Surprisingly, Cesar Azpilicueta is playing centre-back and making that position his own, covering for the slightly dubious talents of Gary Cahill and David Luiz. But we're seeing a rejuvenation of Chelsea's talent under Antonio Conte. Azard scored again. He's now got 44 since his debut in August 2012. That's more than any other midfielder in the division. Meanwhile, Diego Costa is now the league's top scorer with seven goals. He's been involved in 50 goals in 62 Premier League appearances. That's 39 strikes and 11 assists. That's pretty impressive. Meanwhile, Nemanja Matic, who last season looked like he had his legs fallen off. <laughs> yeah, I don't know this season, he's got three assists in eight games, whereas last year, just two assists in 33 games. So what Conte's done is he's got the team working again, he's got players playing at the peak of their abilities, and if Chelsea continue on this form, it could be an interesting season for the Blues. Our first loser also comes from the Premier League, and surprisingly, it's Pep Guardiola's Manchester City pattern. Yeah, they drew 1-1 with Everton at home, and the thing is, they absolutely dominated this game. They had 72% of the possession. This is against an Everton team that does like to keep the ball. 87% pass completion, 19 shots. Now, that's an extremely high number. Eight of those were taken by Kevin De Bruyne, who was playing in this weird uh, system where there's kind of one guy behind one striker. That striker on the day was Kelechi Iheanacho, who managed just two shots. So he didn't really get into the game enough, and it's going to be a problem for them until Aguero is fully fit. They'll want to make sure that he's on fire for this week's meeting with Barcelona. But yeah, for all their possession, for all their shots, they just couldn't get through. And then one man did them, didn't he? He really did. Martin Stecklenburg, what a day. Not a great day for me because I left him on my fancy team bench. <laughs> Nevertheless, the man saved five shots from open play. Of course, those two wonderful penalty saves from De Bruyne and Aguero. However, in front of him, his defense also performed admirably. You've got Ashley Williams, 16 clearances, Three interceptions, what a performance from him. And then they did a classic Everton on the counter-attack away at the Etihad. Amazing goal by Lukaku, absolutely roasting Gael Clichy. He scored from one of his two attempts on target, a classic counter-attack Lukaku goal, where he's probably in his best on the counter, using his physicality and finishing ability to break down Manchester City. However, not a great day for Pep Guardiola, a great day for Everton, but City haven't won a game in three attempts now and they head to the Camp Nou on Wednesday. How's that going to go though? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Next up in the winners category are Atletico Madrid who hammered Granada at home 7-1. Wow. Wow, absolute battering. And there's one man I really want to point out here. It is Yannick. Carrasco, a fantastic display. Uh, he actually scored a hat-trick and got two assists. He's the first Belgian player in the history of La Liga to score a hat-trick. And this was a day of demolition for Atletico, who, by the way, loved playing against Granada. In their last six games, they've scored 17 goals against Granada, so they really do like battering them. Simeone called Carrasco they're the hardest worker in training and the complete player, and it's very easy to see why. He takes all sorts of pressure off Griezmann, he was fantastic going forward on the day. He really is one of the complete players. And Simeone is really benefiting from his sort of versatility on the pitch, isn't he, Pato? Yeah, that's right. Yannick Ferreira Carrasco is able to play on the right or the left. And as yeah. we know, Simeone does enjoy 
versatility in his players. He also likes guys who track back. He also likes guys who can give him give his defense a relief when they use their pace to get away on the counter attack. And all these things Carrasco can do. This is going to help because you don't want all your pressure to be on Griezmann. And also this weekend, Gamero didn't have his best game. And as a result, Carrasco picked up the slack. Now at just 23 years old, he's starting to justify that price tag. He of course scored against Bayern. He scored in the Champions League final last season and really was a game changer against Real Madrid. And here again, starting to prove himself on the big stage. He's an incredibly exciting player. Last year, 43 appearances yielded just five goals. This season, he's managed five goals in just 10 appearances. Wow. If he continues at that rate, and if Atleti can put together an attack to rival the quality of their defense, then they could be looking at a second title in just three years. Our next losers actually come from Bavaria, Patrick, and it's Bayern Munich. Yes, it is. They got their second consecutive draw in the Bundesliga. This time it was away at Frankfurt and it finished 2-2. Bayern actually led twice in this game, but got pulled back. They couldn't even find a winner after Frankfurt had gone down to 10 men. They played nearly half an hour against 10 men. Their front line in this game was Robin, Muller and Coman, who you'd expect to, you know, be enough against most Bundesliga sides. They benched Lewandowski and it proved a risky enterprise because obviously they couldn't get the win. They managed 14 shots to 13 for Frankfurt, five shots on target to Frankfurt's four, but five of those shots only came after Frankfurt had gone down to 10 men wow. and Lewandowski had come on. It's difficult for them because in midfield they were missing Arturo Vidal and that front line failed to really get a purchase in the game. But thankfully, there's one guy in midfield who continues to save the day for them. Yeah, it is the golden boy himself, is Joshua Kimmich. Started the season as kind of a right back. He's moved into defensive midfield, his more natural position, and the kid cannot stop scoring goals. He's now got his fourth Bundesliga goal of the season. That's a goal every 101 minutes, which is better than Robert Lewandowski, who is scoring every 113 minutes. Quite incredible stuff. However, they did have problems in that midfield. Xabi Alonso had to come off at half time for Renato Sanchez, rather surprisingly. And now Bayern Munich are just, just top ahead of Köln, who are behind on two points. Then you've got Hertha Berlin on three points behind and Borussia Dortmund, who are four points behind. Lucky for Bayern that Dortmund drew as well on the day. Otherwise, they would be just one point clear. Not a great day for Bayern Munich or Carlo Ancelotti. But what we want to know is whether Bayern Munich fans at home would accept winning the Champions League if it meant losing the Bundesliga. Let us know in the poll just up there or in the comments below. Next up, we have Bournemouth who smashed Hull's doors in 6-1 this weekend. Yeah, their back doors in, I think. Patrick Van Stran, it really was a demolition. It's now their third game in a row at home that they've won and their third game overall that they've gone unchanged. Eddie Howe really, really fancying his British players at the moment. All 10 of his outfield players were British. Uh, Harry Arter as the Irishman, all other nine were English as well. He played that 4-3-3 as usual. He had a midfield of Harry Arter, Sermon and Wilshere and it worked perfectly for him on the day. All three averaged over 90% pass accuracy and they just swept Hull aside. Created 17 chances on the day. Very, very impressive. It could have been more goals, Pato, but one man in particular was a beneficiary of that midfield three, wasn't it? Oh yeah, Junior Stanislas was the star man in this game. Hull just simply could couldn't deal with him. As you all know, he's very quick. He's got a great shot from range, scored two in this game and assisted two as well. Now, Bournemouth's total of 22 shots is the highest they've recorded yet in a Premier League game. But there's got to be a little asterisk on that performance because they were facing an absolutely atrocious Hull side. This team is leaking goals. They lost 4-1 to Arsenal. Frankly, that could have been worse. They lost 5-1 to Liverpool. That could have been any score. Now, they've now shipped 17 goals in their last four games. These are not numbers that make you think that they're going to stay in the division. And Mike Phelan's got that job permanently, but Jesus Christ, what a poison chalice. But Bournemouth, they've got a face off against Tottenham next week, and that will test that unbeaten record at home. So we'll see what happens. But what do you think? Will Bournemouth stay up this season or are they gonna plummet back down to the championship? Let us know in the comments below. Our final loser comes from Milan and it's actually Inter's captain, Mauro Icardi. Now he didn't have a good day on the weekend, of course lost 2-1 against Cagliari. However, it's his individual performances at the moment that are really worrying. He hasn't scored a goal in his last three games. On the weekend, three of his shots were off 
target, not really good enough for him, especially after he signed a new five-year deal with a 100 million euro buyout clause, thanks to that bimbo Juan de Nara that he nipped off Maxi Lopez. However, the real story comes from the fans and his rivalry after he missed the penalty and was cheered by his own team for missing the penalty pattern. Yeah, he's just released a new autobiography in which he says that last year, I think during the game against Sassuolo, he went after the game to give his shirt to a young fan and he said an ultra pulled the shirt off the kid and threw it away. And the ultras have not taken kindly to this uh, particular allegation. So they had a banner at this game saying, you're hiding behind a child, you're not a man, you're a piece of shit. Now, Icardi has said since then, I'll fight all of them one-on-one -on -one because he thinks he's an incredibly tough guy. He also said that I will bring 100 career criminals from Argentina over here to fight the ultras and they will straight murder them. The ultras said, let us know when they get here. They put a sign outside his house. They're very unhappy. And Icardi's war against some of the hardest bastards in Milan is probably not that clever. Yeah, really not that clever. And to top it all off, to make Icardi's weekend <laughs> even worse, Javier Zanetti has now said he is considering stripping Icardi of the captaincy because the uh, the fans of the club are the most important aspect of the club. Quite amazing considering it was just a week or so ago that he signed this new deal. It's all gone to shit. I'm not sure what's going to happen to him at that club. Should he stay or should he go though? Let us know what you think in the comments below. So those were our winners and losers from the weekend's games. However, there's another massive one tonight. It's Manchester United versus Liverpool. Let us know what you think the score of that game is going to be in the comments below. Now, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out our football face-off that went out over the weekend where we debate whether there should be a European Super League. And as ever, guys, please do like and subscribe. Catch you next time.